Hey everyone, so today we actually have here the Dell Inspiron. This is actually from the gaming section of their type of branding. And this is the Inspiron Gaming 157567. All right, so we're just gonna be doing a keyboard replacement on this one. Um, some of the keys are stuck and they're not working. So uh, most of the time you gotta do more of a palm rest keyboard replacement for those. Let's just flip it over. For this one, there's just one screw. So you just want to take out the one screw and then it should just come out from the back here. So that's just the, all it is for the bottom there. You can see everything you can see the actually there's two hard drives here. There's a battery and there's the RAM. Actually, it's all accessible just from one screw, which is pretty cool. All right. And there's a lot of screws. So we're just going to be taking out things along the way. We want to make sure we remove the battery and then we're going to actually take out the hard drives, anything connected to the bottom piece here because we need to take that up to get all the screws out and everything. So for the battery screwdriver, it's actually the same one you use to remove a Mac um, screen. It's usually those screws. It's the same exact size screwdriver that you have there. So let's remove that. That's really unnecessary to do, but okay. Kind of see it's a little bit silver there. Usually with that little dent there, I mean, someone really tried to remove it. They, maybe they used a Phillips head or they couldn't do it, but that's kind of the whole reason why they they make it this way anyway, so you can't access it, and they make it a lot more difficult. So, because all the other screws look to be Phillips head, but this one is a different one, and this is the main one you have to take out anyway. So, if you don't have a screwdriver, then you um, aren't able to do that. So, it comes up. We're going to do. There's actually five screws for the battery. Let's take that out. All right, and now we can see the trackpad. Um, so, we're just going to be removing the hard drives now. Um, anything that's going to get in the way of us taking up the palm rest there. So, let's just get to that. Be careful when you are taking out the hard drive here because there's a little bit of tape that goes on the back of this hard drive. So, so we'll be a little bit careful. It sticks up like this. This plastic piece has a little latch up there. Just push up right after you unscrew the four screws. Takes it up like that. Now you have all these other screws to go through. There are also two screws on this side too. Okay, once you get that, you just put a little pick that goes on the side here. Okay, so it should come up. Okay, once that comes up, you want to be careful of just one thing here. You kind of see there's a keyboard connection there. You don't want to make sure you tear that off. And there's also another connection. I believe that's a power button connection. So these two, you just want to be really careful of. So just lift it a little bit up and you should be able to detach them. And that whole piece did come up there. So we're actually pretty lucky. This one, um, most of the time it is a motherboard. You got to actually remove everything for the motherboard. But this one just came up actually with the whole palm rest there. So we're actually pretty lucky on that one. All right, so for our model, we're actually pretty lucky. We already have the trackpad. So but what we do need to take still is the power button up here because it didn't come with that. So we actually got one that has a keyboard. I'll show you. So here's our replacement one. It looks really good actually. So we just need to pull from this uh, the power button up here because you can see in the, in the corner that there's a button there and this is the board that actually goes there and that would then there's a cable that goes out and around there. So we want to make sure from the old one that we take out the power button and the little cable there. 
Other ones you might see that actually come out um, without a track pad. So what you want to do is for those, there's actually just screws there. It should be pretty straightforward. You just unscrew them and then put it back the way, the same way it was. I would probably take out this bottom plate first and then go with the top plate. So you can probably just replace it from the old one to the new palm rest that you have. But we're very fortunate that we actually got this piece here because it does have everything that we need. Let's go remove the power connection here. And there's, it looks like there's two screws here. And it should just come right up. So it's just fl very flat. There's nothing holding it down. It's just the two screws. And this will come up just like that. So pretty straightforward and easy. Now we want to make sure we put it back the same way we just took it off. So let's put it back over here. All right. OK, so just test the power button. Make sure you can feel that click there. If you feel a click there, it means it's good. It's been installed pretty well. Um, if you do do this, I would recommend getting one that does have a keyboard in it. You don't really necessarily need a trackpad, but if you can see here, there's little solder pins that go all the way around it. And most of the time, if you want to do something much more easier, you would get one that has screws, but uh, they put solder pins down for all this. So if you would remove the, just the keyboard, or if you got a palm rest without a keyboard, you'd have to re-solder all these in. And you want to make sure everything's flat. So the black piece just covers it for static and this is all taped up and everything so make sure it's all good. All right, so we got the power board in and we should be all good to go. So we're just gonna put it back. Um, we're just gonna do exactly what we did in reverse. So we wanna make sure we connect those two cables in first because that's the only time we get to see it. So we're gonna take the computer again. So the best way to do it is to put it in first so just slide it underneath and go down under. So it goes underneath the screen here. If you don't do that, it's gonna tug a bit. So let's do that first and then we'll plug in the keyboard connection. Looks like it's lined up there. Looks like it's pretty neat there. So now just clip it down. It should be a nice even clip. It should look straight the whole way. Make sure the, make sure it's all flush. The keyboard looks good and the trackpad. It's clicky. I can hear that. Okay. So let's just close it up there. And now we can just flip it on the back. And so you can see this is a little bit open. So what you want to do, of course, is put these two screws in, the top ones that you did first, because that's going to hold the palm rest with the top frame of the, the laptop. So let's put those back in first, just do them in reverse. And once this is down, um, I would like to plug in the connections up here first because they'll go flat. You want to make sure it's all even before we plug in, before we put the plastic piece back on because once you do that, it'll totally cover it like this. So we want to make sure the connections are straightforward and good to go before we plug that piece in. All settled, done. So you a little clip there. It's a little tight on the side. Okay, hear that clip, clip, so all it's all flat and the screw holes all line up, so that's great. So let's just plug those back in.
Okay. Okay, so before I totally secure this, I do just want to make sure I do test it first, just to make sure it's all good. But I want to make sure that when I open it, of course, it's not going to damage it. So we want to put enough screws in just to keep it all um, steady. We do like to test all the keys, so just go along. Like all of them are registering, looks good. So you had a problem with the A J A. All of these are right here. ASDF. It looks like J K L. It looks like this whole line you had trouble with before. So this is working now. Testing multiple times. Let's hold Shift. To make sure that's working too. Check the numpad and. So it does look like it's all good. Looks like the replacement did, was, was doing well. Volume keys work. Brightness, yeah, that all looks good. Okay. So let's just finish placing all the screws back and then that should be it. All right guys, so that's how you repair the keyboard on the Dell Inspiron 157567. This is the gaming edition of their Inspiron lineup. It's not too bad, at least you didn't have to take out the whole motherboard. You just had to take out most of the parts in the back there. There's a lot of screws, but it wasn't too bad. Um, you just want to make sure you take out the plastic piece, of course, because that's a little bit deceiving there on the back here. And then you just want to make sure you take out the palm rest, which is fine. Just be careful of all the connections. And of course, to remove the battery, you do need that, that special screwdriver. I think it's a T8 one. Let me see. Which one is this? Yeah, you do need a T8 screwdriver to actually do that. It actually says it on the board there. They should actually need those to remove it. So besides that, it wasn't too bad. Um, just always be careful when you do connections, especially the hard drive connections, the little one that pops up there. But it wasn't too bad. It's a nice machine. You can see it has a little red Dell logo instead of the standard uh, black and silver. Um, looks pretty nice. They just kind of put the keys in there as red too. But it kind of still does really look like the Inspiron ones. Um, it does have a little bit of a better exhaust. You can see in the back here, looks pretty cool. Has a little here some of the I/O. Actually, has an Ethernet connection. That's pretty cool. You don't really see that too often. Micro SD card, power standard power jack from Dell. Uh, Ethernet, HDMI. So headphone jack looks pretty cool. It's a nice machine. But anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it very helpful, please leave a like down below. Please give a comment. Uh, what do you guys think about the Inspiron gaming? Do you guys have an Inspiron gaming machine? Or would you consider getting one uh, over like an Alienware or anything? I do know it's a bit cheaper than that. It's probably more of an entry level type of gaming machines, but um, I don't, we don't see them too much here. We see them only a few times, but if we're seeing one, we'll probably see a lot more in the future. It's just a very standard, straightforward, maybe just has basically an Inspiron with a graphics card in it and it has a little bit better cooling. Um, everything else seems to be pretty similar to the other specs, but any other questions though, just leave it down below. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed and th have a good one. Bye.